Hello, I'm Hosoda Tomoharu from Class 2C. You're all gathered here, so I'm guessing you all know some pretty scary stories. Kurata-san, was it? Do you like scary stories too? To be honest, I don't really like them. That's why I don't really know any. To tell you the truth, I really didn't want to come here. But Hino-senpai just wouldn't give up. There's a reason for that. I don't really know many scary stories and I'm not really a big fan of them either. But a lot of scary things happen to me. You might say I'm susceptible to seeing ghosts. Or maybe there's something about me that ghosts like. At any rate, I see them so much that I hate it. Have you ever heard that spirits can reside anywhere? It's the truth. They can be anywhere at all. They just float around. There are lots of them around you. You just can't see them. Sometimes you feel a shock without meaning, right? That happens when a spirit passes through you and you become in tune for a moment. And most of the time, nothing bad happens. That's why, even if spirits are wriggling around everywhere, you don't have to pay them any attention. It might be a strange story, but for people who can see ghosts, that's just how it is. But it's not like I can see any old spirit. Of course, I can't see all of the ghosts wandering around a place. I'd go crazy if I could. Spirits give off an energy. Only those with a strong ability to see ghosts can see them. That's the ability you need. But even if they don't give off a strong spiritual energy, you can see them if a certain something happens. For example, let's see. Like, sometimes you can see a face in wood grain or in stains on the wall, right? Visit an old house and look up at the roof. You look at it for no reason, but something about it bothers you. One spot in particular catches your eye. You can't help but think that something in the wood grain looks just like a face. Not only that, but it looks to be in pain. Have you ever experienced anything like that? If you have, then you have a strong ability to see ghosts. Of course, there's a spirit in that wood. Of course, anyone can see faces in wood grain and in stains and it's often just a coincidence. What's important is that it bothers you so much that you can't turn away. That's proof that the spirit is calling to you. Of course, there's no scientific proof for any of this at all. What's real and what's fake? In the end, nobody can really say one way or the other. If you can see ghosts, who's to say anything about that? That's the reality of it. At least, that's what I think. So, stories about spirits in wood grain on the roof or stains on the wall. Are you interested? Of course, this school has one of those stories too. A stain that doesn't just look like a human face, but really has a spirit behind it. Have you seen it? You look like you have a strong ability to see ghosts. You should brace yourself a little more than usual. If you do, you should be able to sense it. There are all sorts of stories about stains in our school. In various places. They're especially numerous in the old school building. Strange shapes in the wood grains of the old floor. Distinct stains that look like they've been pressed onto the wall. Amongst those, you can find all sorts of spirits. Although, they don't feel very evil. 
but the strongest one I've ever felt is in this new school building. I wonder if you know it. The girls' toilets in the east wing of the first floor. There. There's a vague black stain in those toilets. Anyone can see that it looks just like a human face. Huh? How would I know about something in the girls' toilets? I'm not a pervert. I didn't sneak in there alone or anything. A girl from my class came to speak to me because she knew I could see ghosts. If you enter the stall closest to the window, it feels oddly cold. You'll see the black stain that looks like a face next to the door. She wanted me to check to see if it was an evil spirit or not. Of course, the teachers wouldn't give her the time of day, nor would they give us permission to go investigate the toilets. That's why we snuck in. And that's why I wasn't alone. Several girls joined us and we went in when nobody was around. You might think it's strange, but that's how serious and desperate the girls were. There are signs when you get close to spiritual energy. Like, ah, it's around here. The stronger it is, the stronger you feel it. Strangely, I felt nothing. I stood in front of the girls' toilets and didn't feel a thing. And then I realized something. That stain inside the toilets wasn't a spirit let alone an evil spirit. I thought it was just the wind blowing through the gaps or something. When I said that, the girls all seemed relieved. So I thought there was no reason for me to go in and investigate. But, just in case. Some of the girls were worried and their eyes downcast. What would you do? Investigate the toilets. And that's what I did. I couldn't just leave the girls there looking like they were about to cry. Just in case, I decided to go in and see the stain for myself. Honestly, I was nervous. To see the stain, of course. Not over entering the girls' toilets. But I apologised in advance anyway. I thought my heart was going to stop as I went in. The spiritual energy was off the charts. It was completely different to anything else I'd ever felt. It wasn't coming from that area, but rather damp spiritual energy had built up over the years. I immediately realized that some sort of malice was lingering there. If we didn't get rid of it, something terrible would happen. But still, if we told the teachers, they wouldn't take us seriously. Not until something bad happened. Hey, so there really is something in there? One of the girls who had seen my face asked, her voice trembling. Honestly, I wasn't sure how best to answer. I warned them not to use the toilets. It seems like there's something very dangerous in here. I don't think you should use these toilets. A jolt ran through the girls. Honestly, I thought I'd messed up. I had a bad feeling about the place and the girls started crying. They must have been scared. I get it, but you try having a bunch of girls cry in front of you at once. I felt like I'd done something terrible. I knew it was of little comfort, but I said, well then, should we tell the teachers? I don't know if they'll believe us, but... 
I was worried whether they'd even hear us out to begin with. But if people saw me there, I'd be the bad guy. Finally, they stopped crying and went with me to the teacher's room. We went, but we didn't know who to speak to. At the time, four teachers were in the room. Who should I speak to? The social worker, Miss Hida. After debating it, we decided to speak to the social worker, Miss Hida. She was strict, but she would listen to us seriously. You probably don't know her. I told her honestly that I felt an evil presence coming from the stain in the toilets and we should do something about it. What are you talking about? Stop staying such stupid things and go home already. That was her answer. It was what I expected. Well, she didn't laugh at us, so that was about as good as we could have expected. Sorry. That was all we could do. Seemed we picked the wrong teacher. We had to do something ourselves. Wait a minute. As we went to leave the teacher's room, Miss Hida called out to us for some reason. She seemed to be mulling something over. This time, we were the ones who looked confused. Just a second. Would you mind waiting here a moment? She led us to the guidance room. It was the first time I'd ever been there. I'm a serious student, so I never had to go there before. Seriously, don't laugh. We were a bit worried about what was going to happen. Was she going to call our parents or give us a strict warning? Still, that serious look on her face made us think this wasn't any regular visit. I carefully watched the situation, surrounded by the other girls. They all looked like they were going to cry again. They must have been scared of Miss Hida. At a time like this, I had to cheer them up. That's a man's job, right? Right when I was thinking of telling them a fun story. The door opened, and Miss Hida came in. She held a towel in her hand. Something was wrapped inside it. It banged when she placed it on the desk. It sounded like something rather heavy was inside it. She held her hand on it, even as she sat down. There had to be something important inside it. She looked around at us all and, although it looked difficult to say, started speaking. It was a story that took place 20 years ago. Apparently, that stain had been there even then. The school was full of bullying then too. There was a student by the name of Saijo Yoko, and she was the leader of a group of bullies. They would always drag one weak-looking girl into the toilets and threaten her for being too impudent or for not speaking politely enough. They quibbled and bullied her over not changing her attitude despite all their warnings. The reason wasn't really important, but if they didn't like someone, they'd bully them mercilessly. Then one day, Saijo dragged a girl into the toilets alone and pushed her face against the stain. Then she said, Lick this stain. She was cruel. She made that girl lick the stain. Of course, the girl didn't want to, but she was also scared of what would happen if she didn't listen. Crying, she did as she was told. Gross! She's licking the toilet wall! Oh, this stain looks just like you! <laughs> Saijo said after having forced the girl to do it, and laughed. 
Then, the next day, Saijo didn't come to school. A week passed, then a month passed, and then Saijo quit school. Apparently, she had gotten gravely sick and was in the hospital. After that, the group of bullies Saijo led noticeably quietened down. One of her friends went to visit Saijo in hospital, and apparently her face was covered in a horrible marking. It was exactly the same as the stain on the toilet wall. No matter what they did, they couldn't get rid of the mark on her face, and then she stopped seeing people, and nobody heard from her again. Her family also apparently moved far away as well. Everyone said it was the curse of the stain in the toilet. Something bad might have happened to Saijo, but it was her own fault. Bullying in the school died down for a short while after that. That was what Miss Hida told us. Her eyes were downcast the whole time. She let out a long sigh when she was done, and then added. That's why that stain isn't an evil spirit. It's a good spirit that helps those being bullied. If you try to do something to it, you'll be cursed too. If you do nothing, then no harm will come to you. So can you just leave it be? She waited for our answers. How do you think we answered? We'll leave it be. We understand. If that's true, then I have nothing to say. Sorry for making such a fuss. Everyone else nodded at my words. Miss Hida smiled, relieved. Thank you, everyone. To tell you the truth, the girl who was forced to lick that stain was me. Apparently, she was the girl they bullied when she was a student. But still she did her best and became a teacher. And now she works as a social worker, trying to eliminate bullying. When she told us that, we couldn't bring up the story of the stain again. You're good kids. Sorry for keeping you here. It's late, so be careful on your way home. Having said that, she took the towel with something important wrapped inside and left the room. At that moment, I saw it. Hidden in that towel was a lead-coloured blade. It was just for a moment, so maybe I was mistaken. But if that really was a knife, what had she intended to do with it? If we hadn't agreed to leave the stain alone, maybe she intended to use what was in that towel. To kill us. Ha <laughs> there's no way. Not Miss Hida. But recently, I've been thinking, maybe Miss Hida lied. Her story about being bullied and about the bully, Saijo, who was cursed by the stain and quit school. Maybe all of that was nothing more than a lie. That nothing like that happened 20 years ago. I don't know why, but that's what I've been wondering recently. Why did she lie? I have no idea. For some reason, I just think she did. Maybe there's some reason that she needs to protect the stain. And that's why she told us that lie. That's how I feel. I'm a guy, so I haven't been in the toilet since then. But I definitely felt something evil in it. A terribly evil spirit. That's no lie. I swear to the gods. Miss Hida said it was a good spirit, but... I just can't agree. 
there's gotta be some secret behind it. And with Miss Hida. You'll probably have the chance to speak to her someday as well. When you do, be careful. Something might happen. Well, in the end, that's just my guess anyway. And that's the end of my story. Who's going to speak third? <laughs>